you very much, Alessandro and Sergio, for the invitation to participate in, the, in this interesting meeting and to also to visit this beautiful city. So, <coughs> let me see. So I, I have nothing to disclose. We have been interested in, in a number of years, uh, around uh, 10 years, uh, in the hematopoietic stem cell uh, niche in the bone marrow. And uh, we found a uh, number of years ago that mesenchymal stem cells identified by the expression of the intermediate filament protein nesting are in an important component of the hematopoietic stem cell niche in the bone marrow. Particularly, they regulate the traffic of hematopoietic stem cells in and out the bone marrow, and they do so in an integrated manner with the body because they receive uh, sympathetic signals fr from the brain, that, uh, and, and then noradrenaline activates a, a, a beta-3 adrenergic receptor expressing this uh, mesenchymal stem cells and regulates the expression of CXCL12. So this uh, uh, regulation uh, allows for the controlled attraction and trafficking of hematopoietic stem cells in, in the bone marrow. So, as I said, these nesting uh, positive cells that here are, are identified in a transgenic mouse expressing GFP under the regulatory elements of nesting promoter, you can see how these GFP positive cells are mostly associated with blood vessels, but also directly innervated by sympathetic nerve, nerve fibers. So we wonder, what's the pathophysiological relevance of this uh, regulation of uh, mesenchymal stem cells, particularly with uh, neural regulation? And we decided to choose myeloproliferative neoplasms uh, as the ideal disease to look at this, because they are initiated by the mutated hematopoietic stem cells, but then there are significant uh, stromal changes suggesting that the mesenchyme contributes to the, to the disorder. Also, it was shown by the Orkin lab uh, in 2007 that the, the, the the deletion of retinoblastom uh, protein in, 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 in non-hematopoietic cells induce a myeloproliferative disorder. And also, uh, other works, uh, this is a paper from Serge, uh, Serge's group, showing that bone marrow stromal cells produce cytokines that can protect jak 2 va from the effects of jak 2 inhibitors. So it's uh, an important crosstalk be between hematopoietic and hematopoietic cells and stromal cells in, in MPN that could be uh, a potential target. So we found that in, unlike in controlled human uh, bone marrow samples in which you can see these el elongated nesting positive cells that are mostly associated to blood vessels stained here in red, uh, even though this population, this population is very rare, you can detect them in, in, in the human bone marrow samples, but it was very difficult to find them in, in bone marrow samples from MPN patients, despite the increased number of blood vessels that are stained with, uh, in red with C34. Also, expression of the messenger for nesting was markedly reduced in the bone marrow of these patients. This was reproduced in the mouse model developed by, uh, in the group of Radex Coda expressing the jak 2 vf mutation. And uh, you can see how the mutated cells le lead to a rapid decrease in the number of GFP positive cells and also in the number of uh, mesenchymal stem cells measured by the classical assay, the colony forming unit assay. So the, the, the cause of this reduction appeared to be mostly a cell death induced by, by the mutated cells because we could actually detect increased apoptotic cells, uh, even though this population is so rare, after exposure to the mutated jak 2 vf positive cells. So we wonder whether this decline in, in nesting positive MSCs might have to do with disease progression, and we, we enforce the deletion by expressing diphtheria toxin in this population, and this worsens all blood, blood parameters, as you can see in red, leading to uh, accelerated, fibros sorry, accelerated uh, fibrosis and osteosclerosis in the bone marrow, and uh, in faster infiltration of the spleen by the leukemic cells. So this uh, expansion of the most primitive LT and, and ST, long-term and short-term hematopoietic stem cells, uh, was associated with uh, their mobilization uh, to, to the spleen, and particularly with a progressive reduction in CXCL12 expression, and most pronouncedly in the nesting positive population. And actually, the addition of CXCL12, a single, a single gene in this population, was sufficient to worsen uh, thrombocytosis in these mice, as you can see here. 
So because we have previously, previously shown that CXCL12 is regulated by these neural signals in this population, we looked at sympathetic nerve fibers in the bone marrow and found them uh, strongly reduced in, in the JAK2 VF mice, and also the associated Schwann cells that protect these, these nerve terminals were decreased. So a kinetic study showed that actually these sympathetic uh, fibers and Schwann cells uh, were uh, decreased before nesting positive cells and there went apoptosis, suggesting that this neuroglial damage was uh, somehow uh, triggering uh, the, the, the apoptosis of these mesenchymal stem cells. So we decided to intervene by providing the beta-3 adrenergic agonists that stimulate this nesting positive population and uh, seem to be deficient in, 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 the, in the MPN bone marrow. And intriguingly, treatment with beta-3 adrenergic agonists was uh, sufficient to block the development of MPN in peripheral blood, also the, the thrombocytosis. And uh, as a consequence, mice did not develop fibrosis or, or osteosclerosis in, in the bone marrow. And this was associated with a uh, contention of the, uh, of the uh, mutated hematopoietic progenitors in the bone marrow. So this, uh, this is a competitive repopulation assay. You can see in gray the normal hematopoietic progenitors, and in red and blue the mutated hematopoietic progenitors. And you can see how the beta-3 adrenergic treatment through the microenvironment, because it doesn't act, act on the hematopoietic progenitors themselves, uh, it's capable of reducing particularly uh, the mutated hematopoietic stem cells more than the normal uh, hematopoietic stem cells. So as a consequence, there is a, a net four to five fold reduction in the number of MPN initiating cells. <coughs> so uh, other work from Emmanuel Pasteke has shown that IL-6 uh, pro uh, produced by hematopoietic progenitors have an important consequence in, in remodeling, particularly uh, osteoblastic cells that contribute somehow to this osteosclerosis in the bone marrow. And other works have shown that hypoxia also uh, is, is have a strong impact in, in, in JAK2 mutated cells. So uh, if you go over all the literature and what all the works that have been published, probably there is a, 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 a a possible model of uh, MPN manifestation and progression in terms of the stromal changes, where in the normal situation you have these hematopoietic stem cells that are regulated uh, by mesenchymal stem cells that receive neural signals, and, and then the uh, hematopoietic progenitors are m mostly regulated by more differentiated stromal cells, such as those osteoblastic forming cells. But in the, in the uh, in the mutant situation, the, the jak 2 vf positive cells produces interleukin-1 beta, sorry, and uh, probably also other uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines that cause a neuroglial damage, apoptosis of these this nesting positive cells, and uncontrolled proliferation of the leukemic uh, hematopoietic stem cells. So these uh, leukemic stem cells are more free to, to, to expand and give rise to leukemic progenitors that, that obviously produce uh, myelid cells and, and uh, amplify the inflammatory cascade. And this uh, amplification of, of these uh, inflammatory, by, by inflammatory cells and, and, mm, appears to change these more committed uh, mesenchymal precursors such as the osteoblastic cells that are expanded but uh, poorly support the, the normal hematopoietic stem cells. And also there is a, a, a exciting data coming from uh, Dan Tennant's group showing that IL-6 can actually transform also a normal hematopoietic progenitors into sort of a, a leukemic-like hemato hematopoietic progenitors, at least in, in, in regarding how these cells can contribute to the inflammatory uh, um, amplification. So, as a consequence, the expansion of these osteoblastic cells that are poorly support hematopoietic, normal hematopoietic cells, compromises overall uh, uh, hematopoiesis, and, 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 and intriguingly also these uh, leukemic-like uh, uh, hematopoietic progenitors also give rise to more myeloid cells and less uh, lymphoid cells. So uh, we, when we treated these mice uh, with uh, JAK2 inhibitors, even though there was a, a significant uh, decrease in, in several blood parameters, uh, the stromal changes were not rescued, suggesting that, that either these JAK2 inhibitors have detrimental effects on the, on the stroma or, or those, uh, those alterations in the, in the stroma cannot be uh, rescued by, by this drug. 
So we try to target uh, directly mutated hematopoietic progenitors through an alternate mechanism, and we build up on the observation that uh, most hematological cancers are more frequent in, in males than in females. This acute myeloid leukemia and, and, and CML are both most frequent in, in males, and also estrogens have are putative regulators of the of bones, bone forming cells because they have a, a strong effects in, in, in the bone. So we decided to, to look at this and examine the role of estrogen signaling in normal and mutated JAK2 uh, hematopoietic progenitors. And we found that estrogen receptor alpha was particularly highly expressed in all uh, hematopoietic progenitors, both at the messenger and at the, the protein level. And uh, we decided to perform pharmacological experiments use, using tamoxifen, which is a selective estrogen receptor uh, modulator, and is broadly used in, in, to treat a, a breast cancer, and can be useful also in, in other pathologies. So we treated mice with, chronically with tamoxifen and studied what happened in the hematopoietic stem cell compartment. And in, intriguingly, only a couple of injection, uh, injections with tamoxifen were sufficient to uh, reduce uh, uh, the number of LSK cells. And, and then at later time points, you could de detect a decline in more committed progenitors and even in total bone marrow nucleated cells. And this is consistent with, uh, with other reports that have shown that the native hormone 17 beta estradiol also reduces hematopoietic progenitors. So intriguing, uh, intriguingly, the effects of tamoxifen were differential among dif distinct hematopoietic progenitors. So um, multipotent progenitor, progenitors were mostly depleted by tamoxifen. Short-term hematopoietic stem cells were depleted to a, le a lesser extent, and uh, long-term hematopoietic stem cells were actually seemed to be protected from the effects of tamoxifen, and uh, the fraction actually expanded. So uh, <clears throat> this was explained by entry in, in apoptosis. You can see how MPPs and uh, in short-term hematopoietic stem cells undergo apoptosis after t uh, exposure to, to tamoxifen, but not so much long-term hematopoietic stem cells. Yeah. In <clears throat> so uh, in, despite these marked effects on the hematopoietic progenitors, the blood of these mice was uh, virtually normal, and that's probably the reason that this effect has not been noted before uh, by people injecting tamoxifen to induce creatinine recombinance, for instance. But uh, after long treatment with tamoxifen, we could detect a, a small decline in, in the platelet counts, but still within the normal range, but most uh, blood parameters re remain uh, unaffected. So uh, long-term hematopoietic stem cells did not uh, seem to enter apoptosis, but instead they enter cells, a cell cycle. So you can see how tamoxifen uh, reduces the fraction of quiescent uh, stem cells and induces cell cycle entry, and this is also reflected at the gene expression level, and also consistent with uh, other reports showing that the native hormone can induce a proliferation of hematopoietic uh, stem cells. So uh, this uh, cycling effect is at least partially mediated by MIC. Most uh, target, uh, MIC targets, including uh, MIC itself, were induced by tamoxifen, and the deletion of MIC in the hematopoietic compartment also uh, prevented the effect of tamoxifen observed uh, in different cells, such as MPPs. So uh, tamoxifen did not only induce cell cycle entry of long-term hematopoietic stem cells, but also compromised the cell renewal program. Uh, this at the, at the gene expression level, it decreased the expression of uh, uh, CKIT, for instance. And this has a, had a functional consequence because after if, if, uh, myeloblation treatment, this might show a marked de decrease in or uh, uh, a slowed down recovery of the hematopoietic system. So these effects of tamoxifen, uh, they all require the, uh, the presence of the estrogen receptor alpha. If we delete estrogen receptor alpha in the hematopoietic system, the, the effects are gone. And this is not uh, the case when you delete estrogen receptor beta. And the biological effects are also gone. In, for instance, MPPs do not enter apoptosis, or uh, long-term hematopoietic stem cells do not enter cell cycle, enter cell cycle. 
So this, uh, it, the, the impaired hematopoietic recovery after myeloblation ablation was also gone after deletion of estrogen receptor alpha in the hematopoietic system. So uh, this uh, indicates that tamoxifen in this apoptosis of multipotent progenitors and at the same time impairs quiescent hematopoietic stem cells. So we wonder whether these properties could be exploited for the treatment of JAK2 BF MPN. And uh, we used, uh, in collaboration with Thadex Coda, this uh, in <clears throat> inducible model of, uh, of MPN, and uh, we treated the mice with tamoxifen, or treated control mice with tamoxifen, and uh, tamoxifen had an, a dramatic effect on, on peripheral blood counts. It completely uh, prevented uh, neutrophilia and thrombocytosis, and also uh, reduced the mobilization to the spleen. You can see how these spleens are, are smaller uh, than, than these ones and also uh, improve the, the fibrosis uh, and osteosclerosis of the bone marrow. So this is and despite the fact that tamoxifen in, has this no, well-known bone anabolic effect, it increases cortical bone, but it actually prevented the development of this abnormal bone formation inside the bone marrow. So <laughs> we uh, used uh, lower doses of, of tamoxifen, tenfold uh, lower doses, and they seem to have similar, uh, similar effects in peripheral blood. And the, the mutated jak to bf positive cells express estrogen receptor alpha, and uh, we associate this improvement to the decreased number of hematopoietic uh, progenitors, both in bone marrow and, and spleen. And if you look at the hematopoietic progenitor compartment, uh, all these cells are reduced by tamoxifen treatment. So uh, we decided to measure apoptosis because, uh, as all of, all of you know, the jak 2 vf uh, um, hematopoietic stem cells are protected from apoptosis, and, uh, and you can see how every population, uh, when expressing the mutation, is, has reduced apoptosis levels, but tamoxifen is capable of, of restoring the normal apoptosis levels in all uh, in groups of hematopoietic stem and progenitor cells. And, and it, it appeared to be more selective for the mutated JAK2 positive cells than for the wild type cells. These are experiments from a Radex lab showing that uh, in competitive settings, tamoxifen is capable of uh, inducing a mild but significant decrease in the, in the, in the chimerism. So uh, finally, we, we showed that in a xenograph model of the human disease that obviously has many limitations, but uh, still you can see a reduction in the human uh, CD45 chimerism and, and, and mainly explained by apoptosis of these cells induced by tamoxifen treatment. So in summary, these uh, estrogens uh, differentially regulate hematopoietic systems and progenitor cells of renewal proliferation and survival Tamoxifen is capable of, of depleting multipotent progenitors and induces cell cycle entry of quiescent HSCs. This is in the normal hematopoietic setting, but in the case of the JAK2 uh, BF positive HSPCs, tamoxifen blocks uh, completely the, the, the disease by restoring normal apoptosis levels in the mutated hematopoietic stem and progenitor cells. I, and I just want to leave you with a, a com comparison with other models uh, in which we have expressed a jak 2 vf mutation under uh, scl cre er t 2 that somehow leads to a more aggressive disease. And you can see how uh, either treatment with the beta-3 adrenergic agonists or with tamoxifen can be protective uh, in, to, in, in this uh, in, in disease uh, model. And also in, in mutants that also carry a loss of, fac loss of function of ECH2 and that have a more aggressive uh, phenotype, also these mice are sensitive to protection by either beta-3 adrenergic agonists or tamoxifen. So you then end by uh, thanking the people who did the job, Lorena Ranz, the, the sympathetic MPN story, Abel Sanchez Aguilera for the estrogen project, and with the help of others in my lab, um, we are moving from uh, Madrid to the University of Cambridge, and I will be, we'll be very happy to accept uh, consider applications. These are funding agencies. Thank you very much. <laughs>